This is Ken Hans, uh, Best Storyteller in Texas. Uh, welcome to this edition. We hope you enjoy. Uh, the saying of the day is one from Thomas Jefferson, and that is, never spend your money before you have it. Uh, that's before credit cards came along, and uh, that was good advice. Never spend your money before you have it. Uh, credit cards came along, and I mean, it's, a, it's changed everything. And um, I'll, I'll get into that just a moment. Um, I was noticing this homecoming deals going all over, especially with the high schools and colleges are waiting a little later. Uh, in fact, one time there was a coach at Rice, and he said he knew he wasn't going to have a good team because every team that he was playing on the road scheduled him for homecoming. And uh, that uh, he figured, you know, they're going to schedule somebody they can beat for homecoming. And uh, – uh, T. Jones, when he was athletic director at Texas Tech, told a great story about homecoming. Had a woman call his office, and um, she said, who are we playing this year for homecoming? And he said, uh, it's Baylor. And she said, they're going to play it here or in Waco? Uh, yeah, we decided we would play homecoming in Lubbock. <laughs> Not going to go to Waco to have homecoming. And, and she laughed. I had a friend that uh, his daughter – was a homecoming court at uh, Texas Tech, and uh, and she won. And they're out on the field, and the dad's there, uh, you know, beside her, and, and all the fathers are there but the homecoming queen contestants. And I looked over, and she's smiling from ear to ear. And, you know, from times, some girl will want a pageant or a homecoming queen, they'll have tears and everything. I looked over, and he is crying, and she is smiling. You know, he got carried away, and, and he was the one that was crying, not her. College students are flooded with applications for credit cards, and some of them will even mail them a credit card when they first get to college. And I, I tell them, don't do it. Stay away from it. So I, I was looking to see the current debt and everything. The current credit card debt is over a trillion dollars. It's a trillion, 31 billion dollars in the United States. And so in looking at it, and, and one of the reasons it's going up, uh, interest rates are going up. Uh, we're seeing a slowdown in the economy because people that are getting ready to start construction of buildings and houses, and interest rates are 8.5% prime. It means a lot of people are going to pay 9.5% or 10%. It just it's not feasible anymore to build certain properties. They got to wait until you know in, interest rates go back down. And I don't see them going down for at least a year and a half. The credit card debt has doubled in the last twenty years. That's just amazing. They had a list of the average credit card debt per state per person that has credit card debt. And the highest was Connecticut, and it was nine thousand four hundred and eight dollars. Uh, was the average? If you're paying five hundred dollars a month, uh, boy, you're paying a lot on interest. And I use a credit card, and I pay it immediately because I don't want to get in paying their outrageous uh, rates. Texas was number five, uh, eight thousand seven hundred and one dollars. California was 15th, and they were at 7,758. Last, in other words, you know, they're the best, have the least credit card debt is Kentucky, 5,408. But $5,000 average per person with a credit card debt, that's, you know, that's a lot of money. Credit card debt has become the uh, bank for people that can go to a bank and, and borrow very much money and and something unusual happens some health care expenditure or something with one of your children or something like that and and you have to go to the credit card it is a tough issue you know when i was a young lawyer one of the biggest uh, issues that you would have with a client were writing hot checks they'd write a hot check and it was easy to get whatever they wanted and they'd just sign the check and go on down the road I know uh, uh, Alton Griffin was district attorney in Lubbock one time, and people would bring him a check that bounced something, and he had a rule of thumb, and he told somebody, 
I'm not going to take a third party check on a bank in Rhode Island. <laughs> you know, he had standards that uh, we'll try to collect this hot check for you. But if it's uh, twice endorsed on a bank in Rhode Island, if you're in Lubbock, Texas, you should not have taken that hot check. One other thing on uh, credit card and credit card debt, uh, there was a study done not long ago, and there's been more money spent on marketing and advertising credit cards than any other thing in history. And, and credit cards are good if you use them, you use them right. But uh, they can get abused, and uh, credit card companies, uh, they also have to fight fraud. In this day and time, it is unbelievable the amount of money they have to spend on fraud. There's also a new trend that there's less socializing uh, at work or after work uh, than before the pandemic. And in some ways, you'd think that it would would have increased, that they wanted to be um you know, be around each other more because they hadn't seen each other at work, but it's not, and uh, it it has not. It's it's decreased. And see, I don't encourage that. Hey, you see people at the office enough, and you you don't need to you know go socialize with them. Now, if some of our younger people they socialize on Friday afternoon with each other, and that's fine. We have a Christmas party, and that's it. And that, uh, you know, one time we'd have a summer party. It takes more planning, takes focus off work. And and so I just say work and then, you know, going about your business and do what you want to do. A couple other things that kind of humorous. I saw this in Britain, a company called Yale, Y-E-L-L. -L, they uh, help you find addresses and businesses and everything. They are also, just to go along with their business, adapting a perfume that smells like the Yellow Pages. Now, I didn't know the Yellow Pages smell. You know, I'm thinking, what the hell are they talking about? You know, this, you know we, we got a perfume that smells like a Yellow Pages. You know, your date wears a perfume that smells like Yellow Pages. Uh, another thing that Congress, you know, last summer, that they had a hearing on UFOs. Well, any time Congress has a hearing on UFOs, you know, something's going to happen. In Mexico, they had a hearing on UFOs. And somebody brought two dead bodies, aliens. And they were little bitty. And one of the experts in the United States said it was a, uh, it was a stunt. And it didn't help. But we got over a trillion stars out there. And so, you know, may there be some other type of life, some other place. And, and uh but if they're looking at us, they probably don't want to join us. You know, they'd say, ooh, I'm going to stay away from those people. They're crazy. When they had the 50th anniversary in Roswell for uh, uh, the crash over there and the UFO and everything, they had more rear-end collisions that weekend than any other time they'd had because people <laughs> were driving around looking up in the sky. Hey, you wonder if there's one coming by now. And uh, so that, that's, that's always amusing. A Costco employee in... California found four thousand dollars in cash on an envelope and turned it in, and the rightful owner got it. And I, I hope they tipped the person, you know, more than just a hundred dollars. I mean, they ought to give them at least five hundred or something for being so honest. But he was named Employee of the Month, and uh, maybe they gave him a Timex watch. You know, they spent nine ninety eight on watch. I, w I went to a, a banquet one time for county commissioner's banquet in uh in a town out in west texas and they gave up a, a retirement gift to a guy that was a road he ran a road grader he kept the roads great graded and i am tell you that's that's important if you're a county commissioner and your road's in bad shape you're gonna get beat over that and uh but he, he ran a road grader and they gave him a watch. I said, let me see the watch. And it was Timex. And it cost like $10 or something like that. And I told the judge, boy, y'all shouldn't go now. You know, I mean, it may break the county. He said, well, we couldn't pay it the county funds. We had to go around and, you know, pass a collection to get people to give in, give in to that $10. I, I thought, I, I don't believe I want to work there if they're, if they're just going to give you a $10 watch. You know, he had 25 years or, you know, he had some time. And uh, and gave him a certificate, and he is he is real nice, nice gentleman, and and I, I wonder what happened to Rhodes after he left. They might have gotten in bad shape. 
also there was a study I saw, and it said, who has the best social life, you or your dog? And 60% of the people said the dog did. If that's your answer, you have got problems. You need you need to change dogs or you need to change your life or do something. 60% thought their dog had a better social life. I mean, give me a break. Uh, you're uh, you're not living a good life. Now, I've, I've got a friend that works in Austin, and uh, uh, she and her husband, they have a dog, and, and they it goes to a dog sitter each day, and it stays at the dog sitter, and they entertain it and everything like that. I've told them if I come back after I die, somehow I want to be their dog. Uh, you know, I mean, that dog gets spoiled, and it's just uh, uh, unbelievable uh, how well it gets treated. I, I was, and I've told this before on, uh, on this program, that I was like eight or nine years old, and I went to a Christmas party for the family. And when we got in the car, me, my sisters, my mother, my dad, we were all saying, can you believe Aunt Marie has a dog that lives in the house? <laughs> We'd never heard of anybody that had a dog live in the house. Our dog lived under the house, you know, or, or somewhere in his dog house. But he didn't live in the house. We, my dad said, you know, they'll get rabies. I guarantee you that. And mother said, I, you know, they've got fleas. And uh, it, it was quite a conversation. Now, if you ask somebody if they've got a dog lives in the house, they'd look at you odd, oddly, that you would ask such a stupid question. So times have changed. It's last week in Stupid Criminals. A guy carjacked, pulled a gun on someone, and got a van and within a few minutes, the police were at the scene and chasing the van. And they chased him until he jumped a curb and ran into a building, smashed the van into a building. And the building was the police department. You know, now this guy's not real smart. You know, uh, it uh, crime doesn't pay. And, and uh, he, he needs, I, if I were representing him, I'd plead insanity uh, that... Uh, we had a, I had a friend of mine had a client, and they arrested him for making obscene calls. And uh, they got him to the police station. They fingerprinted him, booked him, and let him make his call. He made another obscene one. And I said, yeah, you got a great insanity plea on that one. You know, you might be able to get 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 uh, that, that case dismissed. Also, there was a uh, study done on naps. And th this one is hard for me to believe that the best time to have a nap is at 9 30 on a wednesday now, i don't know I, I i didn't i didn't take time waste time to go into how they did the study and everything but uh i'll, I'll tell you if i uh, take a nap during the day it's not gonna be at 9 30 on wednesday it's gonna be at one o'clock i i want to mention uh, uh one other thing that uh i saw subway is going with a three inch Subway sandwich in Pakistan, and they're looking at doing it in the United States. Jersey Mike's has a five inch, three three inches. I mean, it'd be fine with me. I, I don't have a problem. Most of the restaurants you go to uh, serve you really too much, and that uh, if they want to cut it down. Well, that that probably is to my benefit. My problem is though when they cut it down and keep the price the same. You know, I know that inflation is a uh, rampant. I also wanted to mention several times that w when we did the uh, story on the Louisiana Purchase, if you haven't heard that, you need to go back and listen to it. It's really good. It's how a guy named Livingston really helped the United States and was the key person to making sure that we got the Louisiana Purchase, and uh, 15 states came out of that. And it was a great opportunity for the United States. But uh, there's it, it talked about that that was about Livingston, Robert Livingston, who really performed a great service for the United States. And there are a couple others I want to mention today. Uh, one was a, an actress named Hedy Lamar. And Hedy Lamar was born in Vienna. She came to the United States. She was beautiful, but she was smart and inquisitive about other things. And she was inquisitive about science. And, and during the... Uh, when, when the Germans' submarines were blowing up ships, she was very concerned 
and she and her neighbor, and I was trying to look, his name was George Antill, and he was a composer, and they got to talking about how you could hop from one radio frequency to another, and they were talking about that, and they started playing with instruments and and coming up with methods where they could uh, uh, do that, and uh, lo and behold, uh, what they came up with the hopping of frequencies was, you know, help, helps us with Bluetooth and uh, uh, Wi-Fi today, and that uh, they got a patent on it, and they really didn't make any money, and that was 1942, but it probably saved some ships, and uh, that uh, she never did get credit for that like she should have because she was an actress, and she was making movies. Most people don't know uh, anything about her or what she did in regard to science and technology. And I, and I think it's a great story. Another one was uh, Joe Stillwell. And uh, Joe Stillwell, uh, he went by Vinegar Joe. He was a tough guy. He was a West Point graduate. He was going to go to Yale, and uh, but his dad wanted him to go to West Point. Went to West Point. He graduated with honors. And uh, he was in charge of Fort Benning at one time, and someone drew a picture, a character, of uh, him drinking out of a bottle that said vinegar on it. That's how tough he was. Instead of drinking water, he'd drink vinegar. And so they, uh, th- th- he thought that's so funny. He had pictures made and got it around, and, and all of a sudden everybody started calling him Vinegar Joe. And President Roosevelt, in 1942, sent him to China to be in charge of the American operations in China, and that was to get the supplies that uh, Chiang Kai uh, Shek that he that he needed, and that uh, get those supplies and uh, make sure that uh, that the people that were fighting for freedom against the Japanese that they were fully supplied, and he uh, was fluent in uh, Chinese. He lived there for some time. But at one point in time, he and Chiang Kai-shek got crossways because Chiang Kai-shek was using the supplies to fight the Japanese and the communists. And the communists, the the Mao Zedong and and the communist leaders in China that were eventually going to take over the government of China. Chiang Kai-shek, he fled China and went to Taiwan. That's the reason you got Taiwan. Of course, they're uh, just a speck, but you don't know what's going to happen in regard to uh, China trying to take over uh, Taiwan. But the the actions of uh, Vinegar Joe Stillwell were such that he he got to know the Chinese people, and they really had a great re- relationship, and they were working with the United States we were working closely with them uh, in trying to stop the Japanese from expanding their empire. I think it goes back to, that if you have good people uh, in in any area and another government has good people, you can work out the problems. But, you know, right now our, our greatest competition in the world is China. And uh, it's amazing what they have done to try to uh, influence our government and try to bribe people. Uh, that are involved in government, uh, but they have really been active in uh, doing some things that they shouldn't be doing, and uh, they've been active in building bases different places, and uh, it's going to be our na- main competitor. Uh, Russia, I-, I think something happened to Russia. When they invaded Ukraine, I think they thought that it was going to last a week at the most, and it's going on and on and on. They hadn't been able to win. And I, I think they sincerely thought they'd just march in, that'd be it. And um, that, you know, it was obvious to me, and one of the ambassadors in, in the Middle East told me that once we pulled out of Afghanistan as quickly as we did, that it was just going to be months, and it was just months before Russia invaded Ukraine. They thought they could do it, they could get by with it, and there'd be no consequences. Main consequence they've had is uh, uh, Russian young men and women being sent home in body bags. And uh, so it's been tough. It's been real tough. And uh, hopefully maybe the Chinese 
think that there would be a lot of backlash and not easily to just take over Taiwan. But uh, that is a big issue. But Joe Stilwell, he uh, was in charge of our relations with China and did an excellent job, knew what he was doing. When uh, when Stilwell went, he, he was a colonel, but he became a general and uh, was called back uh, by Roosevelt because he had the falling out with Chiang Kai-shek, who wanted the money uh, that he was getting in the supplies to fight the Japanese and the communists. And that uh, Stilwell wanted him to focus on the Japanese. They need to win that first. W- one thing I'd say about Joe Stilwell and General Stilwell he got to know those people in that country, got to know the, the Chinese, and got to be friends with them. He had a lot of influence with them. And there's a statue in China now. It's the only American that has a statue, and uh, there's a museum. And so uh, he, he was a person that worked head-to-head and toe-to-toe with the people, and, and they were most appreciative. Saying of the day is never spend your money until you have it. That was Thomas Jefferson. It worked then, it works now. <laughs>